Ladles and Jelly Spoons, welcome back to Badger Works. Today, this. <laughs> yes, today we are continuing with our rather uh, epic build of the uh, the battleship HMS Queen Elizabeth uh, from World War II. Uh, in the last video we looked at uh, building the superstructure in the hull and this time around we're going to start looking about how we're going to paint this magnificent beast. So, let's get on with it. Right, so we need to think about choosing some colours. So I've uh, I've got out the uh, the book. We've got the reference book by uh, Les Brown here, and uh, it's it's been helpful. But there's certain bits that are perhaps not so helpful. Um, but I'll go, I'll go over that a bit later. Um, so this is the colour scheme we're going for, uh, which is the the 1943 uh, refit. And it's basically three shades of gray. So there's a, a light gray, a mid-tone, and a dark gray. So what I've done is, oh, I've kind of based the colors to match, or be a similar match to, to this, um, this model from the book. Uh, so I've got some paints here, and I'll show you what I've picked and, and, uh, and how we're gonna use them. So the first one, which is uh, for this uh, medium gray, I'm going to use, oddly enough, <laughs> medium C gray two, XF83. So that'll be for that. Uh, for the darker gray, I'm going to use this ocean gray two, XF82, which I think you'll agree is a, a fairly close match. And for the lighter gray, it's kind of interesting because it's kind of a greeny gray. And this is going to seem an odd choice, but I've gone for this, uh, XF14. Uh, it's, it's, it's Japanese, <laughs> Japanese uh, grey. Um, and it, you may th it may sound weird, but if you actually look, that's a fairly good match, I think you'll find. Um, so I'm going to try it uh, on a few bits and see what it looks like. But this is, I think, going to be what we'll use. And uh, for the hull, I don't have any, I've got an order. I'm gonna be using some uh, XF9 hull red. So let's try some of this uh, JA gray and see what it looks like. Right, so we're gonna start off, as I said, with this uh, JA gray XF14. I'm just gonna put some on one of the turrets and, uh, and see what it looks like. Alright, let's try that off and see what it looks like. Right, well, I think that looks pretty good. I think that's going to be a, a good choice for that light grey. Yeah, quite happy with that. Uh, right, let's see what we've got to do next. <laughs> now for the fun bit, uh, trying to paint this hole. Uh, let's see how we get on with this. I don't know if I'll be able to do this in front of the camera, but I'll give it a go. Right, and there we go. That's the, the hull painted, or well, the first coat on the hull anyway. Uh, so I, I'm working on the principle going from the lightest shades to the darkest shades. So that's the hull done. Now I'm going to do all the rest of the turrets and the superstructure.
Right, so I've done all the turrets and things. What I'm doing now is just putting a, a coat on the um, superstructure uh, to get again get the light colours on first, and then I'll go back and, and finish it off with the darker colours where necessary. to this and then we'll come back. All right, now we've got this beast of a thing to do. So the main thing here is to hit it like from the sides. I'm not really worried about doing the, the decks because they need to be a darker gray. Um, so it's more hitting the sides of it uh, to give us the base for our camouflage scheme. So yeah, as I say, it's kind of a case of hitting it, you know, at a, a, a sort of 90 degree angle. Um, and again, the, the top parts of the superstructure, I'm not, I'm not really worried about those because they'll be a darker grey. Um, it's basically the sides um, are the most important bits to get because that's, as I say, where the camouflage goes. Alright, I think that will do us. Right, we'll let all this dry and then see how we've got on. Right, now for the fun bit. Uh, we've got to start doing all the masking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, this. Uh, this is, I can't remember if it's 18 or 19. It's basically three quarter inch Tamiya masking tape. And I'm going to start by masking up the hull for... Our next darker shade, which is the uh, XF83 Medium C Grey 2. This is going to be fun. Right, so the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to uh, just lay out pieces of tape on this um, tile and uh, cut them to shape and then apply them. So I'm going to start with the hull. So I'll try and show you what I'm doing, but it's going to be tricky. Um, so the first bit is this bit here at the front. So let's start with that. Like that. This needs to go at the front here. <laughs> yeah, this is not going to be easy, but we'll do what we can. Kind of goes like that. So it's level with the top of this top torpedo bulge and it goes over the first um, anchor hole. I don't, know, I don't know what those holes are called, but it's basically where the anchor chain goes through. So that will mask that bit off. And then the next bit needs to go in kind of a curve across here. So I'll cut that and then put it on. So this piece needs to go basically from uh, behind this hole. And then it goes in a curve round to the front of the front turret mount. So let's do that bit. Right, so this piece I've cut as long as it needs to be and it needs to go again as far down as the top of the torpedo bulge. So we need to measure down about 14 millimeters from the edge and quite near the front because the curve is not it's not a perfect curve it kind of bulges at the front and then swoops back up again if you see what I mean and I'm going to hold this down 
a bit from the front because I want a bit to sort of fold over the uh, the top of the side of the hull. So I'll come down, go below that line, and then bring it back up like that. does. Alright, let's stick this on. Alright, so that piece goes on basically like that. And I can fold that over the top there. Right, and I'll basically I'll carry on and I'll do the rest of it and then uh, come back when it's uh, when it's done. Right, so that's one side done for now, and what I'm going to do now is do the other side, and then. Uh, we can start thinking about putting some paint on it. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the hull first and then I'll do the superstructure afterwards because the guns and everything all need to be done in certain ways. So I'll do the hull first, then we'll do the rest. Right, now we've got the hull and the turrets masked up. I'm going to start with those using this uh, XF83 medium C grade 2. Right, so this is the A turret, and this basically needs to be entirely grey apart from this little bit I've masked off. So I'll do this first just to give you an idea of the colour, and then I'll do the rest of it. turret is the same like that All right, now the Y turret only has one corner this grey and uh, the X turret is the same it's just one corner Four of the guns need to be this darker grey, so we'll do those as well. Like that. Alright, I'll try and do as much of this hull as I can, but uh, <laughs> I don't know how much you'll be able to see of it. So I'll just do a bit of it and then I'll come back and show you what it's like when it's finished. Alright, let's take this paper off and see how we did. too bad does it let's have a look at the hull right so here's the hull uh, and it's actually come out pretty good I think try and get as much of it under the camera as I can it's that side 
and there's the other side. Now obviously it's still got to have the dark grey on it as well, um, but uh, I think that's actually come out not bad at all, I'm very pleased with that. So uh, we'll put all this aside to dry for a little while, and then uh, start masking up again <laughs> for the dark grey, and then we've got to do it all again with the superstructure. Um, yeah, but actually it's going better than I thought it would, so right, let's uh, let's get on with it. Right, so next thing we need to do is the dark grey on the hull. Now there's actually not as much of that, so but there are some fairly odd shapes. But uh, let's get on with that and see how we do. Right, after lots more masking up, it's time for the, uh, the dark grey, which is Ocean Grey 2. Uh, and we need to do obviously the hull, uh, one turret, uh, three secondary turrets, and th uh, three of the guns. <laughs> right, let's start with these. more of those. Uh, we need to do three of these uh, main guns. do uh, basically a uh, half of a uh, Y turret. Like that. And now we can get on and do the hole. <laughs> right, let's see how we get on with this. do the rest of the hull and we'll come back and unmask everything and see what it looks like. Right, so here is the hull with all three colours on it, which I think doesn't look too bad at all. I'll show you the other side. looks not too bad at all I think so what we've got to do next is the superstructure obviously uh, which I think is going to be interesting but um, based on that that actually wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be so I don't think the superstructure is going to be that bad so we'll move on and do that next <laughs> right well I was just uh, putting all this together uh, just dry fitting the pieces just so I could do the, um, the the masking for the sides and I've just realized that I'm basically gonna have to do the deck first because bits like this here are gonna have to be painted to match the camouflage so I think what I'm gonna have to do now is is paint the the deck and then I can do the rest. <laughs> so yeah, okay. So we'll 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 do the neck the the deck next, and go from there. I think that's probably the easiest thing to do. So let's do that. 
Right, so to paint the deck we're going to use a uh, wooden deck tan, XF78. Seems like a perfectly reasonable choice for painting a wooden deck. So uh, yes, that's next. Right, this is probably going to take several coats, so we'll uh, we'll come back when it's finished. All right, we'll just uh, put these aside to dry fully, and then uh, we can carry on from there. Right, so I'm just working on masking um, the various turret rings and whatnot. Uh, I've already uh, masked the top here, so I can spray the sides. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm, it's kind of a tricky one because there's obviously all these little knobbly bits around the turret rings. But I think what I might do actually is I might just cut those off and then put them back on afterwards. So, and then that way I can mask these turret mounts properly and then um, paint them and then put those bits back on afterwards. So I think I'll do that. Uh, what I'm doing is uh, I've got a circle template here, which if you don't have one, get one because they're brilliant, uh, especially for doing wheels and things like that. See, that will actually fit over that, but the problem is, I don't know whether you can see that, but obviously all those little knobbly bits are lifting up off the deck. So unless I cut all of them off, <laughs> it's not going to lay flat on the deck. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut off the ones that are the nearest to the turret ring and then I'll use this template on the masking tape, uh, draw a circle, cut it out and then um, I will uh, put that over and then I can press it down around the edges and then spray it and I'll do the same with the smaller ones as well. So I'll cut all those out uh, and then we'll go from there. This is a circle cutting uh, compass by the way you set it to either the diameter or the radius that you want um, plop it in the middle and then spin it round and it cuts a circle it's not the greatest tool in the world but it's uh, fairly helpful in situations like this the trouble is sometimes you have to go round it many many times to actually get it to cut properly so Get off. All right, there we go. Right, so what I've done, where I've cut the little knobbly bits off, is I've actually um, drilled some holes in the deck. These are one and two millimeter holes. And that's for these pieces of uh, styrene to go through. So what I can do is I can just put them through from the bottom, push them up as far as I need to go, and then snip them off at the bottom and glue them in place and that will mean they'll be far less likely to get uh, knocked off or dinged or bashed about. So now I can mask this up and we can get on with painting it. Right, now we can peel this off of here. And that should just drop over the top of there. Like that. might need to trim that a touch but that's not too bad so we'll just take the uh, the knife I'm trying to get this under the camera uh, we'll just take the knife and go around the edge like so and just trim it off I'll do that and then I'll show you because it's awkward doing it under the camera Right, there we go. So now we can uh, paint that one. Uh, like I say, I'll do the smaller ones as well. It's exactly the same process for the small ones, just a smaller hole. 
Right, so I'm just masking up these um, secondary gun mounts, and what I've got here uh, is a 9 16 gasket punch, um, and it's conveniently an exact fit over <laughs> the, uh, the secondary gun mounts. So what that means is I can basically push this over and cut it out. The only trouble is this is a bit blunt. It's you know like weapons grade Chinesium. Um, but basically just put it over the top of the gun mount like that and just kind of work it in a little bit like that. I might need to clean up around the edges a bit with the knife where it's not quite near the edge but now what I should be able to do is lift that up and there you go you see so that was convenient <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll get on and do the rest of them Right, well this uh, little lot represents probably a good <laughs> two and a half hours of masking. <laughs> Yay. Uh, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to stick on the various, I think what they call capstans, and this shield, because uh, I thought it would be easier to put those on after it was masked, and, you know, cause, and these all need to be pretty much the same colour as the rest of it, so that's fine. So I'll stick those on. I've probably said this before, but I shall say it again. Building this model is like trying to redecorate your house through the letterbox. Right, let's just double check those. Right, so now I might well start on the back of it. <laughs> Yay, I love masking. Right, so after another God knows how long of masking, that's both sides done. So now we can uh, get on and paint it. So it's like four hours of masking for about. 30 seconds of spraying but you know that's the way it is never mind um, there's still a couple here and there that I'll do by hand but this should get the majority of them done
right and after all that now we've got to peel all the masking tape off again <laughs> right there we go it's not too bad is it there's a few little bits here and there that need touching up but uh, on the whole I think that looks pretty good there's the back so like I say there's a couple of little bits here and there that need touching up but uh, yeah not bad at all so now we can do even more masking on the uh, superstructure <laughs> right so we've got this masked up now we'll put some paint on it and see what happens Right, there we go. Let's uh, give that a second to dry and then we'll unmask it and see what it looks like. Right, well they don't look too bad, do they? And uh, so what we've got to do now is mask them up again and do the, uh, the darker grey. So, yay, more masking. Woo! Anyway. Right, let's uh, unmask all this and see what it looks like. Right, so uh, here it is with the camouflage scheme all finished. And I think that's looking pretty good. So we can uh, move on to some more little fiddly bits. Okay, so we're getting somewhere now. We've got the main paint scheme done. And what I need to do now is start on some of these fiddly bits. Um, of which there are many remaining as you can see here so what I've done here is I have uh, these are all the little vent bits uh, that need to go on the deck uh, and I've separated these out so these parts here need to be the the light grey the Japanese grey uh, these parts need to be the medium grey and then there are some other bits that need to be uh, the dark grey. Now all the dark grey bits I've left on the frames for now basically because there's so many of them uh, <laughs> it would be impossible to keep track of them all. Um, however many of them, although they're on the frames are in a position to be painted. Some of them will need to be tidied up as we go along. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to paint these parts because need to be uh, the light and medium grey and then after that we'll go on to the uh, the dark grey bits so let's do that next Right, now I'm switching back to our um, dark grey for the last bit. I've also switched airbrushes. Um, just one other little thing uh, you may have noticed in some of the earlier shots. Some of these jars have a, a cross on the top. Basically, um, in some cases, what I do is I thin out the whole jar. So when I get a new jar, I fill it up with, um, with thinner. 
so that it's ready to be sprayed straight out of the bottle. Um, and if I do that, then I just mark the top so I know that it's already been thinned. Uh, I don't always do it because, quite frankly, if you do that, like this one is just normal, uh, if, you, um, if you thin out the whole jar, then it makes it a lot more difficult to use it for things like brush painting and whatnot. Um, or if you want it like a very thin mix or a very thick mix or whatever. Um, so that's why I don't often do it, but if I do do it, then I mark the top of the jar, in case you were wondering. Uh, as I said, I've also switched to the slightly bigger airbrush to do the other bits. So we'll get on with those. Right, now this is about the only bit I've taken off of the frame, actually. This is the, uh, the rear um, flagpole. I suppose. <laughs> I'm not sure what you'd call it, but yeah, it's a flagpole. So I'll do this bit first. Right, now I'll do the other bits. So like I say, normally I wouldn't paint parts on the frames, but these bits are just a bit easier to do like this. And, um, you know, I can just, most of the bits like these bollards and whatnot, um, I can just cut those off and use them. Uh, things like the Carly floats and that, I can just touch them up when they're done. So I'll spray all the rest of these bits because there's a lot of them. And then we'll come back and see how we're getting on. Right, I'm just... Uh cleaning up some of these parts and I just wanted to show <laughs> try and show you like these are the like binoculars and look at the size of that and I've got to clean up these sprue marks and it's there are eight of these just on uh, one section of the superstructure so that's those. Then we've got uh, these. The, the trouble is for some of these bits is they do have kind of um, the right, you know, the, 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 they're attached to the sprue in the right way, but they have really weird connecting points. Like they obviously must have had trouble getting the thing to, uh, getting the thing to, to, mold properly and so what they've done is they've added extra little bits here and there to um, make sure it works you know make sure the pieces come out and the trouble is it means that sometimes where you've got a bit like this oh, I can't really see that where you've got a bit like this there'll be another bit on the side of it sort of sticking out the side to make it obviously you know mold better and as a result of that, it makes it um, very difficult to uh, get the pieces to fit. So I think we can start it on now. I'll start with this light. All right, uh, let me tweeze this in there. because this is about the biggest bit and you see that won't fit in the hole so I'm going to have to cut this down to make it fit which is annoying as you can imagine and this is one of the things I found a lot with this model is you spend a lot of time and effort just making these bits fit together properly because they've um, they've not I don't, I don't know it just seems odd it feels to me like I mean yeah you expect a certain amount of fitting for parts you know making them fit properly and that but at the same time you know some of these parts just don't fit at all and they're nowhere near to fitting and you think well they must have someone must have test built this thing someone in the factory or whatever must have test built this and uh, you know they must have gone back and said it doesn't fit together and they just, they've said well never mind and just shipped it anyway <laughs> I suppose 
you get to a certain point where there's only so much they can do but it seems a bit odd that the big bits fit together and the small bits don't and it's the small bits that are the most fiddly and uh, require the most sort of effort if you like right you stay there for a minute and I'll try and get some glue in there right there we go I'm just hoping that all of these little bits here are going to fit because if I have to do each one of these individually that's going to be an absolute nightmare anyway let's get these bits put on So I suppose the one good thing about bits like this is they don't need to be exactly lined up because obviously they would be used, um, you know, you'd have people looking through them so they wouldn't all necessarily be pointing in the same direction. I mean, I dare say if the ship was under review or something, then uh, yeah, they would probably um, all be, you know, someone would go around spending hours lining them all up but for the sake of a, a, a ship at sea I think you know I don't think they would all be pointed in the same direction the, w the one good thing is the way they've done these frames is you do get quite a lot of kind of spares of, of some bits like these um, which is just as well because I've already dropped one on the floor and the fact that there are, you know, umpteen spares, it means I don't have to go looking for it, which is nice. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to go through all of this for every bit uh, on every bit of the superstructure, because quite frankly, I mean, you can see how long this is taking, and this is just to do these bits. Um, so I'm not going to do all of the superstructure but I'll just show you this one just to give you an idea of uh, how long this is all taking to put together this is as like I say this is what is is killing it is is these bits here but you can see now why I didn't put these on before I uh, painted the superstructure because imagine trying to do that masking and whatnot with all of these little bits on it would have been so difficult. That's not the right hole, that hole. I don't want to hear any jokes about getting it in the wrong hole either. You know you are. That's better. Uh, right, now these range finders. Now these do have a do they have a front and a back? They don't look like they do actually. They look like they've made them symmetrical. <laughs> Which is a bit cheeky. Alright, now that one goes in there. See the other thing is as well with these, it's just it's even just getting in there to, to glue it is difficult. Because the bits are so in such awkward little places. Which is why you, you probably noticed on some of it I've used, um, you know, different types of glue rather than using my usual solvents because um, it's just very difficult sometimes. It's like these bits really I should have done with uh, the um, contactor because I think it would make it oh where is it there we go can't find the old stop laughing at the back okay now we need uh, guns as the man once said lots of guns 
because I do not want to lose these guns. Um, I have got a few spares, but the the problem is with the guns is it's not the spare guns. It's the it's these little photo etch um, gun shields. There there aren't any spares of those, um, which means if I lose any, I'm going to have to basically make them out of I don't know what but they'd have to be made individually and I really don't want to do that I think what I'm going to do actually is I'll get all of this from the top like that and I will pop that in there I think I mentioned before one of the interesting things about these ships is uh, the way the armament changed over the course of the war and um, the fact that they were suddenly fitted with far more anti-air defences and it really doesn't surprise me when you look at you know the way things changed the fact that it went all about from all about the you know the big gun battleships and then the next thing you know it's all about aircraft carriers and uh, of course nowadays it's all about although it's still technically all about aircraft carriers the aircraft carriers are mainly the you know the, the weapons that the aircraft on those are carrying it's nearly all missiles I mean, yeah, they still use bombs and stuff, but the idea nowadays is to keep everybody as far away from actual combat as possible, if you can. And uh, and that's what they do, you know, these sort of standoff missiles and all this kind of stuff. I mean, you look at the first Gulf War, and uh, the amount of Tomahawk cruise missiles that were used. I mean, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. Those things are not cheap. I can't remember exactly how much a Tomahawk cruise missile cost at the time. But uh, they were very, very expensive. You know, they were in the sort of hundreds of thousands each. And they were firing them, you know, hundreds at a time. And they had submarines and whatnot carrying them. And they would just pop up to, you know, like periscope depth or whatever, and blast off, you know, 20, 30, 40 of these things, and then clear off. And the surface ships did the same thing. You know, they would pitch up, you know, 200 miles off the coast, and uh, fire off volleys of these missiles and I think it was <laughs> Billy Connolly said about it about smart bombs <laughs> they used to turn up at your house in a taxi and they, they kind of do in fact actually speaking of bombs it reminds me of something the, uh, the bunker buster there was a, a weapon that was developed during the first Gulf War. It was a bunker buster and uh, normally when it comes to developing a new weapon it takes sometimes years of, of testing and design and stuff and you know different bits and pieces going on and testing and all the rest of it and uh, they found out that the Iraqis had all of these bunkers and uh, so what they did was they needed a, a weapon to, uh, you know, a, a bunker buster, basically. And uh, <laughs> what was quite comical about the whole thing, in a way, was the fact that these, um, these bunker busters, weapons, they went from drawing board to deployed in less than 30 days. And they came up with this bomb that could penetrate 
uh, I think it was 30 feet of reinforced concrete and then explode and when you think about it 30 feet of concrete is an awful lot of concrete <laughs> to get through and to drop this bomb and have it you know accurately hit and then go through 30 feet of concrete before exploding is quite some feat. of engineering but they did it in 30 days less than a month from from the requirement being identified to the weapon actually being in use on the battlefield 30 days that's uh, quite some going right anyway I think uh, there's a couple more bits to go on I've got a couple more guns to put on uh, Right, now this bit needs to go into that little slot there. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this on its side as carefully as I can to put that on, because that's going to be fun. Get in there. Right. Like I say, I'll have to touch up the, the paint on some of these, but I knew I was going to have to anyway, so. Okay. Right, I'm going to let those ones dry before I put the same on the other side. I'm not sure what these are. I'm assuming they're like cleaning rods for the, for the main guns. I, I don't know. Um, that's certainly what they look like to me. I mean, can you imagine a, a pull-through for a gun that big? Uh, right, and I need to do two more guns on the deck down there. Let's put those on. I just realised, actually, I haven't really been checking to make sure I've got this all under the camera, so I hope you can see all of this. I do apologise. Sometimes, you know, one gets a bit carried away, and uh, the next thing you realise, you've just built half the thing, and nobody's actually seen what you've done. So, but I think we're all right. I'm sure you get the idea. Right, get in there, you. There we go. Right. Okay. So, I will attach these other bits to the sides and then uh, move on from there. But that's just giving you a rough idea um, of how long it takes. I mean, that was... 25 minutes to fit those parts so <laughs> anyway it's you know keeps me off the streets doesn't it anyway uh, right let's move on right so the next step is to replace all the little knobbly bits we cut off um, so to do that I've got some pieces of suitably sized styrene here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them through from the bottom like I said And I'll basically work them up like that. And then I'm going to paint the top of it. Then pull it back through, cut it off and glue it. So, uh, like this. So, I've got a pot of our ocean grey here. And so, I'll just... Paint the top of this. I'll just do this one quickly. Just paint it down sort of two or three millimeters like that all the way around and then I'll pull it back through until it's about the right height 
which is about there. Then I'll take the cutters, get hold of this so I don't go twanging off, snip that off flush like that, and then a drop of glue on it. I mean, I don't think it's going to go anywhere anyway because that's a very snug fit, but, and there you go. Now I'll just uh, go around and do the rest of them. Right, so that's our little knobbly bits put back on. I've also taken the opportunity to uh, touch up a few of the other bits as well. Um, so what I'm going to do now is put uh, the various bollards, uh, guns and other bits and pieces on. Um, I think this is probably about the best time to do that. Now there's something odd going on here because we don't seem to have enough guns. It says quite clearly in the plans, make 17 guns, which I've done, and I used all of the photo etch, but I think we're going to be short one. I'll have to have a look at the, maybe I missed one of the bits on the photo etch. Never mind, we'll figure it out. Right, well I don't know how that happened, but I managed to misplace one of the guns, the little AA guns. Um, I genuinely don't know how that has happened, because I there are 17 gun plates on the photo etch frame. Uh, there are 20 guns. Uh, on the the model frames and somehow I've ended up with 16 uh, I don't know how because I made them one by one um, and when I checked I actually had four there were four guns left on this frame which meant I had made 16 instead of 17 but I genuinely don't know how that's happened but anyway there you go um, what I've done is I just cut a piece out of the uh, the photo etch frame here and uh, manipulated it suitably and uh, I've made uh, a frame for the last gun so it's done it's fixed it's just a bit of a nuisance but I'm just I'm more just confused as to how it's happened anyway that's beside the point um, so what I'm going to do now is do the front of the deck or the forward part of the deck uh, same thing put all the various bits on and I think at that point we'll call it quits for this video so I'll do that we'll dry fit everything together and see what it all looks like right so here's where we are so far uh, we've got the um, camouflage scheme all painted the superstructure is all together though it's still not fitted to the deck properly yet um, but we've done the lion's share of it now I think I think we're, we're, we are definitely getting somewhere so uh, in the next video we will look at finishing off the painting of the hull fitting the props and whatnot uh, there's still a lot more little bits to go on uh, there's the main anti-aircraft guns, uh, all the little boats and things. Uh, we need to fit the guns to the main armament. Um, but I think we're most of the way there now. And I'm, I'm quite pleased with how this is turning out. So uh, hopefully you guys are <laughs> enjoying this uh, rather beer moth of a build. And uh, if so, I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers. Bye.